Say a person does get spoiled by hearing the bass. <laughs> That's my, I, I, I have a feeling that Art Tatum might have liked the way you played that. Uh, would that be at least a, an, an educated comment? Um, well, I would hope so. I he, hope uh, he... What was that note? Mm. Was it E? You want to bet? You, yeah, bet? You, passed, <laughs> you mean if you hit it on the piano, it would prove it? Well, you, maybe. You passed the test. A bit close to A little touch of feedback there. <laughs> uh, Oscar, that's really terrific to ha have here. Um, Explain to people who may not be uh, as uh, illustriously educated in jazz as I am, or the person who made my <laughs> notes for me, uh, wh what it means to say that there's a Tatum overtone to uh, the way you played that. Or Well, our Tatum, I think as we both know, was and still is, in my view anyway, the best jazz pianist around. Yeah. His uh, sensitive relationship with the instrument, his command of the instrument, which is the thing that intrigues me least, believe it or not, and I'm sure intrigued a lot of other players least. Some, it did, had a bearing on a lot yeah. of people, because, you know, when someone, when people hear someone run up and down the keyboard, they immediately go like, ah, you know, uh -huh. uh, whether it be Horowitz or Artatum. However, his harmonic sense and his rhythmic sense were the things that intrigued me, and he was just a, a total virtuoso of the instrument. What's your formal musical education? Uh, a classical background. Yeah. Uh, originally, a, you started on the trumpet. Well, I started on trumpet. Yeah. yeah. I had a lung ailment and I had to give that up at six or seven. Or something. TB was it? Yes. Yeah. And in those days, it wasn't as easily handled then as it is now. Yeah. And you, you simply couldn't physically play the trumpet with, at that point. Well, the doctors that. didn't think it was a good idea. Um, it had the whole family had suffered from it, and uh -huh. uh, because it was a lung ailment, they thought it was wise enough to pursue a wind instrument. So I reverted. I had started on piano. Yeah. Do you so think it was that my second some, choice. Do you believe in, in a destiny of some sort? I mean, what, would you, had you not had the, the problem, uh, continued on the trumpet, or do you think you were destined for the piano in some way? At that age, you mean? Yeah. At that age, I thought I was destined to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yeah, that's all I was sure. thinking about in football. You, but nevertheless, I did have a love for music. You weren't one of those kids who was forced to come in from the baseball field and practice scales, were you? I had to admit that, yes, I was. Were you really? Yeah. 
And well, I mean forced. I'm glad they got you in. <laughs> how, how many innings did they let you play? Um, so, so your own musical background includes trumpet, which can you still play it now? Or it could be. I can still finger the trumpet. You know, yeah. I can't really play it because I, I don't have the chops for it, as they say. I wonder if doctors would still agree that it would be unwise for you to Not play this it. Size. it. No, I'm, I mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Almost every kid is attracted to the trumpet first, for some reason. It's the jazzy. If it isn't the drums, it's the Well, trumpet. I think today it's the guitar. Oh, well, Wouldn't now, say, yeah. yeah. But uh, trumpet is, a, you know, any instrument to a youngster is, is, a, is, a, is a thing of mystery. You know, mm -hmm. you see, the, whether it be a shining trumpet or a brand new guitar or... Yeah. I think the least intriguing instrument sometimes, because it's usually, or was, usually in the home, was a piano. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of a piece of bad yeah. furniture. Yeah, it became there. part of the part of the background, and so kids lived and they were used to it. But if you brought a trumpet in the house, you immediately got everyone's attention. Yeah. Did Harry James mean anything to you? <laughs> Not in those years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that bit. You said you said some very interesting things in interviews I've read and Downbeat and other places. Uh, uh, you said a lot of jazz Chris criticism is is um, uneducated and. Fraudulent, I think, may have been. I don't know whether those well, were your I, words. I, mean, I can't remember if I used that word, but it's a very good word in that. Yeah. Well, I think so. I think because uh, it's you know it gets back to the the old armchair quarterback syndrome. Okay, mm -hmm. it's all very well to sit up and I know people that today, never mind jazz, they go to classical concerts and they hear, they'll hear someone like uh, Horowitz or Richter or they'll come back and say, uh, I don't think he did the list thing very well. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a great comment, considering they don't even play piano. Yeah. You know, I, I've always... Plus I've you always recognize a bad egg without being able to lay one. Well, it, not necessarily as many people as I know that are tone deaf. You know, yeah. I know a lot of people that couldn't carry a tune if you put it in the valise for them, okay? Uh -huh. So consequently, <laughs> if they sit up and say, uh, the third movement of Since Such a Thing was badly handled, I, I have to question what mm -hmm. they're basing this on. You know? Yeah. And it seems like they owe it to the musician to explain just how it was badly handled rather than to just... Well, say, I don't know whether they owe it to him, Dick, but I really think that, you know, when you stop to figure, the preparation that goes, that mm -hmm. most musicians go through in either medium, jazz or yeah. classical, uh, I know what I have gone through to prepare for whatever I do today. Uh, it's a very serious thing with me, sure. believe it or not. And uh, even when I had trios, I was known as a taskmaster for that reason. I think you owe... Your every, every bit of input you can get, yeah. you owe it to your listening public, regardless, regardless whether it's one person, your own mother sitting in the living room, or thousands. Uh -huh. So I could wave my hands and magically make you a jazz critic, and you hear a guy sit at the piano there and play, what, what would be your criteria for judging somebody else? If I were a if player were, myself? If you were a critic, uh, I mean, if you wanted to write... A non-playing critic. <laughs> yeah, let's say. I'd have to go the emotional way. Mm -hmm. That would be the only way I'd know how to go. I'd have to say... I would have to assume that I am involved in listening to various players in, of, yeah. in jazz, and I'd have to say to myself, first of all, did this performance move me? Did it reach me? And if uh -huh. it did, then I would start looking at why. Uh, did it reach me if I had a, a simpatico with the harmonic prog uh, progressions that he used, or the, mm -hmm. the uh, connecting runs, or the, the general overall feeling with which he, he or she played the piece? Yeah. Can a jazz critic hurt you any in the way that a theater critic can close a play? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, there's nothing to do to you, is there? I don't, well, I, I, I must say this. I, I won't call any names, but I know of one particular talent that I think was a, a pretty big talent that was, I th don't think was in any way was aided by some very severe and undue criticism. And I think it had a bearing uh, a mentally on the person, yeah. yeah. You should just not read them. Well, I like to read them. What, what's, the, what's tougher, concert or, or club? T to me, uh... A concert is tougher, Dick. Yeah. Are, are there clubs left? You keep hearing oh, yeah. that the clubs are vanishing, but yet oh, they're yeah. there. Yeah, they're there. The clubs there. Yeah. Uh, concert, I say, is tougher because you, you know, you get one shot. It's like a championship fight. Yeah. And we, uh, there was a very astute critic in Germany once. That he made a very, I thought, a very bright. Uh, uh, he took a very bright view to this thing about reviewing concerts, and he said, you know, when when an artist arrives in town for that one shot, everybody has been prepared mentally, and you know psyched up by the recordings which are made under the very best circumstances and they're expecting a level yeah. to, to come up to that. To come up to Meanwhile, it. you've flown in, you, you've, they've lost all your clothes as they did yesterday for me, <laughs> or uh, the hotel isn't ready or something, or your meals are bad or whatever it is, and you come to the hall and the, maybe the sound isn't right. 
You have one shot to make it happen. Whereas in a club, you have, first of all, if you have one or two or three shows, you have time for adjustment for any of these things. And the club is a different feeling, as you can imagine. Yeah. The, the airline lost your clothes? Or the well, hotel? They, that's, that's normal. The airlines usually, oh, yeah. they usually Where did all those clothes go? <laughs> I, I don't know, but I spent a weekend in London yeah. some time ago trying to find them playing what, concerts over the weekend. Which airline was it? Uh, it was, I think it was a uh, little airline. Better be sure now. <laughs> no, because they should never lose your clothes. And if they do, then you should be able to mention them on television. So if you well, want to mention them, feel free. No, I wouldn't brief. do that to them. That's not going to change their ways anyway. You know? It might help. <laughs> uh, you credit Johnny Holmes with being a great influence on your technique, I guess, and so on. Uh, can you stand the fact that his name doesn't ring a bell with me? No. You can't? No. I, I can stand the fact should that I know Johnny Holmes? I, I, no, you shouldn't necessarily know him because Johnny Holmes is a name that would come up uh, and it would mean something to people in Montreal that, that were familiar with the, my early days. Yeah. He was a band leader that I worked with. Was he black or white? No, he was white. Don't mind my asking. No, he was white and he, was, uh, he led a band in the west end of Montreal and uh, I joined the band at one point and he became uh, sort of a, a, an overseer, mm -hmm. a loving overseer of mine and he talk you know he, I'd do things and he'd say no I don't think you ought to do that that way because I was really in the formative years and, and you know you're sort of jazz doesn't have didn't have then and still doesn't have the exact uh, scholastic uh, material available mm -hmm. for someone that wants to play jazz and didn't have that then as I said and he'd say no I don't think you should do that like that you know that doesn't it doesn't ring true or doesn't fit and he'd criticize and you know praise if it was needed after you play again now uh, I'd like to do that thing that I like to do when we get a great artist on the show, which is to have you break down and explain to me a few things that are phrases that we've read and heard and so on, but don't really know what they mean. No, I'm and then you could uh, illustrate them for us and show us, and, this way. and we get a master class here at very, <laughs> very reasonable rates. Uh, <laughs> Oscar, uh, would you step to the Bosendorfer right. one more time for we'll us, and to. then we'll do that after that. All right. Oscar Peters. That's the Bösendorfer here. <laughs> well, I thank you, and His Grace the Duke thanks you, and uh, Oscar, let's hurry through this. I've got some All notes right. here from my scrapbook. I want it to be possible to pick, up, pick a tune and have you no, show I... us just uh, superficially, perhaps. Are you going to pick a tune that uh, I know? I'll let you pick the tune. Right. No, no, go yeah, ahead. Because uh, I might pick buttons and bows, or you know, who knows. Um, and, and if you could show us some of this, what I think are called stylistic trademarks of other, other pianists. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we mean by the phrase, the stride piano of Art Tatum? For the stride example? piano of, of uh, Tatum or people of that era is, yeah. the, is the ability to play the background for yourself and make it work like a rhythm section. As opposed to when you play with the rhythm section, mm -hmm. where you would just hold a chord, usually, or punctuate with a chord and play. Because the drummer is playing and the bass player is playing... This way you go. Yeah. So the right hand is really the instrument, and the left hand is putting the rhythm section out of work. That's right. Yeah. That's the idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what else did I put down here? Oh, yeah, here's something I wrote um, uh, in note of. That's, uh, talking about influences on you, and the, quote, the two-fingered percussiveness of Nat Cole. Oh. Could you show the two-fingered oh, well, percussiveness Yeah, Nat course? would do this sort or of thing. the TPC. <laughs> which each note has its own articulation rather than being an insipid phrase like that. Yeah. It's... And he used mostly the front end of his hand. And, uh, emphatic like that, that. It was very emphatic. Sort of it was articulated like you do in speech. And then, on, and then the Muzak running all notes <laughs> together. Uh, that's part of the sentence. The other part we, they could hear in your early influence was the lyric octave work of Earl Garner. Oh, they're talking about the full chords, like this, where Errol used a handful of chords to play melody. If he was going to play uh, Getting Sentimental, he might play it like this. And delay it like that. You know? uh -huh. yeah. And as I said on the, another show, you have to know how to be able to do the proper delay so it doesn't sound false. Since you didn't name the airline, you better not name the other show. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> <laughs> What was it um, uh, run by a middle-aged man with white hair? No. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the relaxed block chords, or would that be a typo for black chords? No, no. I guess not in George Shearing's case. <laughs> not in George Shearing's case. George Shearing <laughs> used this kind of thing. To run melodies. 
minutes left. Rolls is a picketing. Where he used the fullness of a sax section almost, instead of playing. Uh, you get the full chord. I'll play it again with partial chord. Partial chord would be two notes, for instance. Uh -huh. much sparse, much yeah. more sparse. This yeah. is full. You know, it just occurred to me that uh, I, I read so that you had given up singing because you sounded a little too much like a well-known singer. Don't say who it is. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> um, let's see. Could you do a little bit of a blossom fell and see if you know, can tell who you sound like? <laughs> I wish I could. Or uh, what's that thing? Give me a kiss to build a dream on. No. Do you really sound like him? Well, it's debatable. You I'll won't do it? it? That way. I don't want to embarrass you. You don't embarrass me. I, I sing occasionally when I, you know, when I feel, you do. feel up to it. Could you do, sing just a bit and see if you sound like anybody? I'll be the what judge. What a day you this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Well, it's almost like being loved. And if you say Donna Summers, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> no, I think everyone... I think everyone recognized the voice of the immortal George Burns. <laughs> uh, let's, let's not explain it. What are double-handed, or, or is it double-octave bass lines? Uh, I think there was, well, actually, you mean double-octave uh, melody lines, Maybe. rather than bass lines. Maybe. Because if you play um, a linear invention, if you play, uh, as a gain, on uh, Sweet Georgia, yeah. if you invent something, alternative line, yeah. then you can play the same thing with two hands. Are they doing the identical thing, those yes. two hands? Right. Okay. So you, get, you get in two, mm -hmm. two different places in the piano, it gives a little different substance. This is a little difficult to do if you haven't been doing it. Was that ever hard for you, or when you were the oh, first no. time you tried that, could you do it? No, I couldn't do it the first time I tried it. Okay. Uh, what would I be hearing if the if the pianist was tonality based? I've seen that term thrown around. Oh, you'd around. be hearing. All right, if you take the same tune, roses. Okay. Prickety, right? You'd hear this sort of thing. Melodies. You might hear a more involved harmonic like. chose to do. You're just moving the harmonies around and changing them to give it yeah. to a different shape to the tune. Thank you for this master lesson. <laughs> Quickly, two ten-second questions. How good a trumpet player was Louis Armstrong in terms of musicians' terms? Fantastic trumpet player. Yeah. And the other one is, how long has wigs been a verb transitive, as in cigarette holder, that wigs me, in the lyrics to set and Bell? But you don't need to answer that. All right, we'll Oscar Peterson, it's a genuine thrill to have you here. Thank and you. if you would play us off, it would be... Uh, Wonderful. Just a little cocktail piano. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Thank you. Oscar Peterson.